right, let's have some fun here. We're going to stamp out a cave or mine type of situation, maybe a cavern. And uh, let's get started here. We're going to construct this using the boulders with lichen and ledge. Two very similar designs. One is a little bit more textured, geological types of situations. You have a lot of uh, kind of different um, types of rock quite often. And I thought I would do some, oops, I got a little blur there, no, no problem. Uh, get a lot of these uh, kind of geological types of um, changes happening in different um, areas. And uh, I don't know, like gold mining, as far as I know, I think they used to uh, quite often kind of do uh, prospecting, kind of looking around um, kind of veins of, uh, or uh, areas of quartz for uh, gold veins and whatnot. I don't, I don't know a lot about it or really very little, but I've done some exploring in uh, old mining areas in addition to the old mines themselves. I probably will not go into them quite as much as I used to um, eagerly unless I'm really um, convinced that it's quite safe. I don't know, in my younger days I'd just go right on there and uh, the only thing I'd kind of be wary of is if a mine shaft had a kind of really a, I don't know, questionable timbering, but if, uh, if the mine was um, pretty, um, I don't know, solid in terms of solid rock, I wouldn't have any problem going in there. But what we're doing here is we're taking these rocks and I'm kind of stamping a roof up here and let's kind of vary it a little bit. Why don't we oscillate it and we'll go with the, the ledge next. But often, I don't know, I used to see um, kind of areas of quartz and uh, there'd be a lot of mining activity around that quartz. I think there was, they'd often find uh, veins of gold um, in that quartz. Okay, now watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take the ledge and I'm going to stamp it in here. I could mask that off, but I really don't need to, okay? So let's vary it like so. I could stamp it at a completely different angle as well. You can go like this if you want to, and this could be the roof, and this could be a you know background wall or something like that. You can you know, do it in different directions, uh, which I might do. Okay, but as far as the overlap over here, the way that I've designed Stampscape stamps are the transitions are uh, make it possible to do very little masking. Designs that have a lot of outlines in them, you have to really do careful masking, otherwise you're going to get line over line, okay? Those are really easy designs to do, but they don't make it... They kind of put the blending onus on the individual. See that? that? No mask, and it just stamps right into there. But I did take a little bit of ink off the bottom. But that's a lot faster than kind of having to mask everything, right? So you just kind of take off a little like that. And put it at whatever angle you want. We'll go like this. See, the boulder with lichen is probably going about in or about right there. But you stamp it in like that, and there's nothing there, right? So a lot of people say that um, they think, "Oh my God, you make that look so easy." Well, a lot of people will take the time to carefully mask because they're used to using outline designs, be it scenic stamping or other. Okay, and <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it, it'll take a little, you know, quite a bit longer uh, to do if you're having to do all of that extra work. But I try to make, take all of that um, work out for you so that you don't have to worry about it. So I don't have to worry about it, too. Remember, I'm the one that's going to be using these designs a lot. So in my demonstrations and just my own st scene stamping, I don't want, you know, to do a ton of extra work. All right. All right, so get that rock right there. Uh, let's build it up a little bit like so. Okay, but if you are doing some masking, let me show you some masking. All right, so there's that ledge there. You take it like this. There's your mask. Take it like so. And you get a 
good blend right there. All right, now I went boulders with lichen, ledge, boulders with lichen. Let's take the boulders with lichen and blend it into a ledge. How about that? Okay. So it just comes to show you can you can mix and match. You can oscillate even when kind of the textural pattern is different. But when you have you know you're talking about nature. Um, okay, now this is going to blend in that side. See that right there? This side is going to blend into that one. So you can wipe a little bit off the edge like that. That's going to blend into it. And, okay, I'm going to be going up there a little bit. So you just wipe a little bit off like so. And, you know, from, from a textural geological standpoint, you can really play around with things and just blend them in like so. All right, now remember, I'm making kind of a cavern here. So, um, you know, I'm going to have these little hikers in here, and I'm going to put some um, gems and crystals in here. But let's make an opening in here. Let's say these kind of, ex you know, explorers here, they're not really suited up for cave exploration, but that's what we have here. Let's put their, um, the mine shaft, um, or cavern, whatever cave, opening right here, okay? So, this is going to be easy. Remember my masking that I did before? We'll just do a rough mask like so. Yeah, about like that. Kind of under mask a little bit. Okay. So we'll take a little bit of this. I just inked it up around right around here. And let's put remember I was saying how you can do um, these at different angles to represent maybe a wall in the the background, you know. Oopsie, I didn't really mask under mask there quite enough, so there's a big gap, but it really doesn't matter. Ink it up again, like so. A little bit more pressure, you know, because even though the paper towel is thin, you're still stamping on a little bit of an edge like that. All right, now, here's the thing. I'm going to have these hikers here, so I don't want the background too complicated, so let's kind of blot this off a little bit like so. And let's add in some additional background, but let's have it very light, okay? We'll go like this. All right, so we have, can you see your cave right now? See how it opens up and opens in here? Now this um, would normally be darker because it'd be farther away from that light, but I want that light there so that if it was this busy and I stamp these guys right over that, all of that would kind of interfere with the silhouette, so that's why I've done it lighter right there. Okay. All right, looks like a fun cave and looks like a safe cave for exploration. Maybe as long as you don't go in there a quarter mile, you're good. Some uh, caves you're, uh, you know, you're on your uh, hands and knees kind of crawling around in there. <laughs> All right, now we can do this a couple different ways. I can build this up using some lighter tones first and then building into the darker tones. But one of the fun ways to kind of um, utilize and to kind of expand your kind of your sensitivity towards um, lighting okay is to take just your black ink okay and this will give I was talking with someone about this the other day um, about how do you you know you take your really dark tones and not to get this real definitive edge you know how do you get it to transition really nicely okay and this is what I'm doing when you're using like a black ink we're not going for a black application like that okay what I'm doing is I'm going like this okay so look at this right here that's just a light touch and that's probably a 5% gray 7% 8 9 10 11 12 you know what I mean 15 20 I don't know 25 until a few swipes that's like I don't know what would you say like a 50% gray you know what I mean and that's black right there so this really gets you kind of tuned into um, kind of your touch. How much pressure do you apply down? How much ink do you use when applying that ink? So this really um, gets you really in tune with that. Now this is just, you know, some copy paper right here, okay? But I can get a pretty good light touch on it. So if you're doing a matte paper, 
matte cardstock is going to be much easier to do than this, but it's still easy on, you know, the, possibly the worst paper you can possibly use, just copy paper, you know. But this is glossy cardstock, so it blends in a little easier and smoother, okay? So this is how you stay in one area. I'm not trying to hit. I'm not going like this, okay? You just kind of work an area and develop it, okay? But watch this, though. As you're doing this, though, what I'm doing is I'm developing the sense of light. The light is here. So I'm going to, just in general, I'll probably have areas a little bit darker um, in one area and lighter towards the light area. But I want that light to really stand out, too, so I'm going to have to put some tone, you know, next to it just so that it's not, you know, super light right there. You know, they don't have, like, some kind of spotlight shining in from, you know, that area out there. But see this right there? You know, just a little bit of tone like this. See, you're just building it up very lightly. This is just a paper towel, too. Paper towels are really great for this because paper towels are absorbent, right? They're designed to absorb moisture. And that being said, they're great at absorbing moisture so that they hold a lot of moisture so that they transfer a lot of moisture as well. So this is a really perfect tool for this. They're cheap and accessible. Okay, so see that? How, uh, you know, right over here I'd normally, you know, I'd get that a little bit, you know, uh, darker. Okay, but again, I'm going to stamp those um, uh, backpackers in there. I could do that right now, but I think I'll wait. Get a little bit of a feel for it, you know. It's like I'm just kind of dabbing on, I always make this analogy, and it's kind of, because a lot of this can probably relate to it, but, I mean, not that we've done this with kids, but if you're applying kind of makeup to a kid's face, like a really young one, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, year and a half years, you know, something like that. They're going out on their first Halloween or something, and you're applying kind of some little makeup to their face. Normally you don't apply anything, you're just going out, but just in terms of... Uh, you know, the notion of it, you know, imagine you're applying some kind of makeup to their face, you're going to do it very, very gently and lightly, and you're going to kind of build it up, you're not going to slather it in, okay? You're just going to apply it very lightly and spread it around. Imagine it's like a, not a liquid makeup, but like a powder one. We're using liquid here, but, you know, the kind of the, uh, um, I don't know, the description of the touch here would be as if you're doing kind of powder. You know, imagine you're applying like a like a pastel on this card or something of that sort. Okay. And it just goes on nice and lightly. Okay. Now, I mean, you might get a few little streaks, you know, when you're first doing this, but what you do, you see, what I'm also doing is I'm kind of working an area. Watch this. I might put down, I don't know, 50 little swipes just in a two by two inch area or so like this see I just I'm still in that small little corner right there and that's how I get it nice and smooth because I'm making multiple passes you know to get that tone all right do you see that kind of lighting starting to develop though in here I mean I have this whole area to fill in here and there's no you know there's no right or wrong here um, you can have, you don't have to see it as, okay, wait, would there be light there? If the light is here, would it be reflecting off that? No, it's not like that, you know? What I'm doing down here now is I'm just, I want to oscillate things a little bit, okay? See this right here, just for some variation. A little dark light, dark light, dark light. And that just gives us, um kind of a value variation, which one you do, it's not, you know, important. It's not as if I'm going to go like this and go, oh my gosh, I darkened in that rock right there, that was wrong. You know, it's not like that. What you want is just some variation, just, just whatever kind of, I'm not really thinking about it, I just kind of start swiping and then I just, you know, okay, that area is dark there, so this area is going to be light, you know. Flip this around. See, I'm kind of going in here on this ledge. 
But I, you know, a little bit, it's, it's going on to the, uh, the boulders with lichen underneath it. No big deal. Okay. So then as it's, as it's kind of developing like that, we can have some light kind of flooding in over this way too. I don't know. See if I make this area darker right here. Look at how that makes that area kind of pop out. I don't know if I want it that light, but you know, I could put a little bit of tone onto it like that. Okay. And easy processes look easy to do usually. That's why, to me, you know, a lot of people you comment. You make it look so easy, too. Well, it's because you've been doing such harder, you know, much harder, or time-consuming. I wouldn't say they're harder, but they're time-consuming processes. But to me, just in general, I avoid kind of time-consuming processes if there's an easier way to do it. Now, if there's only one way to do it, and I want that effect, I'm putting the time in to do it. And, you know, we should. We should go for the, uh, you know, the the looks and the effects that we desire, you know, to get the end, you know, the desirable end result. But there's a lot of things that I've seen done um, that can be done in a much more expedient um, fashion, okay? Not that everything, you know, should be done for speed either, but um, just in general, okay? I, I'd prefer to spend time on things like, um, embellishments or, you know, little details, things like that. Okay, so if there's an easy way to get your desired results, I would, you know, suggest doing them that way. And then spending the time on, you know, kind of exploring those things within the process that you really enjoy doing, okay? All right, so, so this, you know, and I'm, you know, once you do it, go over an area. It doesn't mean you're you have to be done with it. You know, see, I keep going back and refining. It gets a little darker there. I match it up right here with a little bit more kind of darkness. Okay. Getting a little darker underneath the uh, uh, the ceiling or whatever. Like so. All right, coming around. <laughs> I'm still using that same site. Eventually that kind of area on my uh, Paper towel tends to start fraying, but then you just, you know, you just switch up and just use a different portion of it. It doesn't even take like a whole paper towel to do this. You know, you're using, I don't know, what is this? This is like a quarter piece or something like that. There's very little. I could probably get two of these half page scenes out of this one paper towel if I wanted to. See, I just kind of refolded it. We have that. All right, now, so sometimes I'm kind of swiping, and sometimes I'm tapping here, all right? Tapping kind of builds up a little bit more ink, because, see, sometimes if I swipe, I'm kind of removing ink, but if you kind of tap it, you're building up little beads of ink um, to get a darker um, result, okay? So just, uh, you know, use it accordingly. You'll get a feel for it very quickly um, when doing this. Um, some inks are a lot thicker. This is, happens to be a Marvy ink, which is one of the thinner inks, but very, very rich and deep. So, kind of the build-up process with thicker inks happens much faster. It doesn't mean they get darker faster, but kind of the paper starts to achieve um, somewhat of a super saturation. Well, I wouldn't say super saturation, saturation. Um, 
and then you know it might be kind of a it might be slower going applying your ink because the ink is built up so much if they're thicker to begin with you know you might go for the same application and you're thinking man this isn't just isn't getting any darker sometimes what you can do is you can just allow it to um, set up a little bit you know or you can heat set it just minorly you know just so it dries on the surface a little bit so you can go in and apply more ink or you can build up more ink all right so see that opening right there i'm just kind of darkening the area around right there to reveal kind of the cave opening cave entrance This is a pretty fast way to work too when you just when you build your grayscale like this. We are going to tint this though with more ink. You know, just to bring some color into it. thought spelunking would be a really fun thing uh, and kind of right up my alley as far as things I'd like to do one of these days but um, I don't know if I'll be doing that at this point in time I, sh I would like to go and just tour some you know I don't know Carlsbad cavern type things I've seen uh, the only caverns I've really been in are uh, the Mitchell caverns which are uh, you know not a, not a very well known cavern system in the uh, Mojave National Preserve in California and it's you know within driving distance of kind of the Southern California area it's on state park grounds when I was a kid and we were up in Oregon is it, it's around the coast I think the Oregon caves I was just too young you had to be over a certain age to go on that tour so i didn't wasn't able to do that one my brother sister and mom went and my dad had to uh kind of hang back with me and kind of go down and meet him at the uh exit area yeah one of these days i'll make it back and actually do that one all right see this is kind of coming around um some lighting going on here you know maybe this area up here can use a little bit more contrast right in here so you just kind of dab it in like so kind of build it up you know you, you, you try not to build it up or try not to go for it and achieve you know a certain look with one tapping kind of build it up and then you have more control over it you can see it kind of get a little bit darker as you go each tap I think it's like I don't know remember it's kind of wet uh, dry on here too sometimes so each tap might represent something like a I don't know like a five percent or two percent kind of addition of gray to a certain area See, I just wanted a little bit of tone back there, so I'm kind of dabbing in a very dry version of this ink in here. Kind of muting it a little bit. I'll give this little... Um, 
area up top here a little bit more tone. Alright, I think that looks pretty good as far as our tones go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be, I don't know, what I call tinting. It's kind of like old photo tinting um, types of processes. We'll go with some very light um, tone inks and just give it a tinge of some other color. And we'll just build it up accordingly. We'll see how it looks. And, uh, I don't know, let's just see how it goes. Okay, now, I find that... I mean, I didn't have to use this pad here. I'm just using it for the lid. Antique linen. This is the re-inker for it. What I'm going to do... Sorry, if that was off screen. Antique linen, re-inker. I'm just grabbing this. Re-inker. This is another thing. If you want to save yourself, like, I don't know, five minutes on one color. I don't know if it would take that long, but... I don't know, two minutes... That's a pretty good amount of ink right there. It's about two drops or so for my re-inker. But this amount of ink would take, you know, if I'm dipping into the pad with this, it would take, you know, a little bit of time. Not so much time. I mean, if you don't have it, no big deal. But this pretty much, these couple little drops here, gives me a pretty good amount of coverage. If there's some areas on here that are very light, maybe don't go over it too much with this. Okay, now... This is kind of smearing around some of my black ink, but no big deal, because I want this to kind of build up in there anyway. Maybe instead of wiping, I'll kind of dab. Okay. With you, with you guys, if you're using kind of non-Marvy, um, it's probably a lot wetter than this, too, so... Um, you know, dab, kind of swipe, whatever. Heat set if you want to. Okay. I don't know if you can see on the camera right here, but uh, hopefully you can a little bit. See that kind of tinge of another tone in there. It's not just black. See that kind of little warmth in the rocks? Okay. Now, let's go to the walnut stain. Maybe I should heat set, heat set this a little bit. Now, let's see how the walnut stain goes. See my pad here, or applicator is, it's kind of real inky with the black ink. Okay. But, that's fine. Kind of, if I'm combining, you know, antique linen and black, then you're creating some kind of transition color in between those two um, colors then, right? And sometimes that will blend better as a result. You see, I want to keep some of these little areas fairly light. But look at these two distress colors come just combined with black. I mean, doesn't have doesn't that have kind of a real kind of you know somewhat or somewhat of a, a natural rock tone tinge to it? Is that fun? All right, let's see. Let's blot some of this off here. Let's get into some of this area right in here. Hitting some of these rocks up here on the uh, ceiling. Get a little bit of a warmer tinge down here. Okay, it's like pure I don't know, walnut stain. Look at that right there, down there. Isn't that fun? All right. 
I think that looks pretty good. Let's do some things. Let's go for our impressions now. Okay, I'm going to put these hikers right here. Okay. Our cave kind of explores, but one of the things I like to do too is I like to bring a little bit more texture into my piece. Okay. I just have these this design called tiny rocks that I like to bring into uh, areas, especially sometimes they get a little muddled, okay? I think it's rich down here with texture and tone, but it could be even more um, textured and crisp, in other words, okay? So I'll put this at a little bit of an angle like this to go kind of with the, uh, the angle of those rocks. Now it's fairly dark in there and I'm just stamping it in dark so um, it doesn't stand out a tremendous amount. You can go for uh, kind of lighter impressions on some of these rocks in the, uh, kind of in the distance. See these rocks over here, that they were going kind of vertical, so I'm putting these uh, vertical accordingly. All right, so there we have it there. It's little spots like that. See that? Doesn't that look more natural? Doesn't look like a real rock. And these ones here, you can see little textures in here. They're subtle because I've kind of ghost stamped it out. You see that right there? Does that look like real granite to you? Rocks are one of those things when I take a look at scenic stamp designs I, I kind of gauge a person's kind of ability to draw by their rocks. If they get those rock formations down really well I can tell them um, you know, who understands kind of form, texture, and everything like that, because you have everything kind of stripped off, and you just have um, kind of the bare forms there, which you can't hide uh, things uh, like, a, I don't know, just general rendering kind of uh, skills. So I like my rocks really uh, kind of um, accurate. Okay. Adding these guys down here. I usually don't have um, kind of people kind of going off the page like that. They're usually going into it. So if I have these backpackers, they would usually be on this side, but I want to keep this narrative of this kind of movement going down like this, this visual narrative. I'm holding this down a little bit longer too so that the ink transfers. When you're stamping kind of damp into damp, if you pull it off too soon, it creates a little bit of a vacuum and it kind of, that you don't get that good ink transference. Okay, so there they go, like that. See that right there? See, your eye comes in like that, it kind of follows them down like so. All right. Now, um, I'm going to create some extra lighting in here. And what I want to do is, I think I'm going to take a hole punch like this. And we're going to create kind of a flashlight situation. Not my idea, someone on the uh, Facebook group came up with this idea, and I thought it looked really fantastic, um, of using a flashlight in a cave. I thought, oh my god, that is so awesome. You know, the light beam idea. But they had someone carrying a flashlight, shining a light beam, so. Let's try some of that. Let's try some of the Moonlight White.
And I'll get a fresh cotton ball here. Okay, so. Okay. Is there any, is there any pig ink on here? I can't tell. There we go. Okay, so let me see if this is in the right spot here. Okay. You don't have to illuminate fully. Okay. It doesn't have to be a, you know, super, super bright flashlight. I mean, you can put, you know, however much you want, what you want down here, but. Try to center light it, uh, illuminate it too. Get a little bit more light in the center of the beam, or of the, whatever, not the beam, but the reflection. Like that. And I need to go a little bit lighter. That'll be my preliminary right there, but it's like that. Okay. And I'll try to put a little flashlight on them or something like that. Um, let's go with a little bit more opaque. Let's try the brilliance here. Brilliance inks are a little bit more opaque. They're just they're just fast drying though. Okay. So let's try that one. Yeah, let me use the cotton ball again. Yeah, there we go. It's like a little bit of a flash lit light style of a situation there. And down in that front, I mean, they could have headlamps on too, but I'm going to put a little flat, where's that, their arm? I'm going to put this flashlight in their hand. So, <laughs> and maybe I'll try to create that beam going out from that. I need to wait for this little gel pen to dry now. I should have done it maybe on a Sharpie. Okay, so we have that. A couple little areas of illumination. Now let's go with some additional lighting in here. Okay, so here's some of this. White pigment ink, okay. I like to have kind of a nice streaming light in my scenes, so I'll add it around where the light is coming into the scene, okay, and I'll kind of blend it in where light meets dark, okay. So get this light right in here, it's coming around in here. turns um, the lighting um, into a very soft light when you add this type of touch. Okay. See like that? Doesn't it seem like the light is kind of just, it's like a character in the uh, piece. I think my ink is a little bit moist still, so let's grab a little bit of the black. Not that big deal. Alright, so see that right there?
Maybe a little bit too much there. Let me dab that off a little bit and blend it out. The brilliant things dry pretty fast, but they don't dry so fast that you can't kind of manipulate them a little bit after you apply them. See, now that's like perfect right there. go. All right, now I want to bring some attention to some of the uh, things that I'm going to, elements that I'm going to have in here a little bit later. So let's add a few little kind of uh, light beams coming in here. I think right over here would be a perfect spot for uh, that. I'm going to have it very, I'm going to have it kind of subtle, okay, where they, you know, it's not super strong. It just is a, is a beam that dissipates fairly quickly, okay? So, let's go like this. And then you just kind of very lightly tap in like this and transition it where it's uh, thicker over here with paint, or ink. Pigment ink's almost like paint. I always refer to it as paint because that's what it feels like I'm using. See that right there? You know, it kind of dissipates like that or kind of breaks up. All right. Now let's go like this right here. Let's have another beam going this way. It doesn't have to be solid across this, okay? I think it's better if you just kind of... I, I, I'm kind of learning how to do this, kind of making it a little bit more uneven like this. Um, so you can even break the beam up. You can go with a tone, break, tone, break, like that, okay? I guess it's a little bit more natural looking, that, doing it that way. Maybe one beam can be very short, okay? You make them narrow. Now, normally I'd have, I'd pick out some kind of vanishing point, and I would kind of direct everything to that vanishing point, but I, I don't want to do too much of that. But look at that. Isn't that kind of fun right there? Let's have another beam going maybe down here. Maybe this, see this big rock? Maybe this big rock right here is in the way. So it's in the way in one area, but maybe it kind of catches on kind of down here. So I'll build this one up from this way. I'm not doing things that I think would make sense. I'm just, I don't know, I'm just you know, putting it wherever, and just trying to vary it a little bit. Uh, let's make this, I don't like that one too much. I'm going to make it wider then, okay? You just add a little bit more. Kind of have things going back in perspective, though. See how I have this kind of angled like that. that. Okay, these would have a vanishing, let's make this the vanishing point right here, just the top of the uh, cave, okay? Right up, right up there, and yeah. Let's see if we can get kind of some other light in here in a couple little areas maybe. Like this, maybe. Maybe you get a little light creeping in in this direction. All of it's right over here, but you can have a beam kind of coming in here a little bit. Mm-hmm. 
it's not a really strong one right here, but I think that it kind of does the job. Now let's come down here, I think. Let's do a real, let's do a real narrow one. Oscillated, I'll kind of have a little bit and none. Like that, kind of broken up like that. It kind of says that, you know, kind of the beam of light is running into kind of uh, some, uh, you know, items along the way which, which are kind of breaking it up. All right. And how about one more kind of narrow kind of over here? So you just you you just want to vary things a little bit. You can make them stronger, some lighter. Kind of like that. Kind of makes things look a little bit more dimensional, though, doesn't it? it? Kind of forces perspective a little bit. I just kind of, you know, you just refine your beams wherever you want it to go. Again, a little bit of tacky something right in there. So I'm just going to take some white pigment ink and a good slathering out of it, and I'll just plaster it over that whole entryway right there. And this kind of blends um, the beams together a little bit too by doing this. Sometimes it, the beams get a little bit too sharp looking everywhere and it's just kind of good to go back in and kind of blend them in a little bit, you know, bring in a little bit more pigment ink into the scene like this. right over here so I'm getting some on the uh, little character's head which is normally not a, a big deal but if it's supposed to be a flashlight there's a nice should be a nice silhouette of this figure right here so I'll just remove some of that ink right here you can remove it with a pen this is a little scratch knife or you can just draw the head back in um, yeah. Okay, so let's see. These beams look pretty good, I think. It looks like a real cave to me. If I do say so myself. <laughs> okay, now let's have some fun here. I was thinking, I was really wanting to do gold. Do I want to do, I think the diamonds would look really fantastic in here, though. I mean, we can do both. Why don't we do both? Well, let's see how it will look. Okay, so I have um, some crystals right here and uh, little gold rhinestones right here. Let me, okay, 
I'm going to do this on a separate piece of paper. Last time I did it right here, and I'm, I don't know, I got glue all over my, uh, all over my scene. I'm not terribly, like, anal when it comes to, uh, stuff like that, if you, you know, if you haven't noticed. You know, I don't mind, uh, I don't know, getting things gummed up, you know, my fingers are covered in, you know, paint and whatever. Hey, you know, whatever it takes to to get the results you're going after is what I always say. All right, so I just put some glue here. I think that's going to be easier for me to handle on this than squeezing it out of that little bottle. But let's put um, some little dots of glue down here. I have to put enough to where I can see what I'm doing, but I don't want so gigantic of a blob or anything like that. Everywhere where I put a little dot of glue is, you know, going to be an area where I might, you know, consider putting, um, you know, those little crystal rhinestones. I'm putting some in the light right here. Okay, let's start off with, well, let's start off with both of these. Okay, so I'm going to stay fairly small with my application of these um, for right now. Okay, so I'll use my handy gem picker. That, and let's see if I can spot where I put some of that glue. I was going to say let's go with the even smaller one, but yeah, this is this will be a a bigger one in the small area maybe. I'm gonna add more, but you can kind of see what's going on right here. See those little crystals kind of sparkling down there. It could be diamonds in the uh, you know this little mine or the big, maybe not a mine, but a uh, cave. <laughs> I'm having a hard time spotting where I put my glue. I'll just, let me see if I can see it at a different angle. Feeling around for that little glue. There we go. Glue dots. When I put down a kind of a slathering of glue, it's very easy to see. Okay, let's see. Maybe not the most dynamic video viewing here, <laughs> watching someone apply these tiny little crystals, but see those right there? They kind of twinkle down there. Now, if I apply some into some areas that are um, they're a little bit uh, darker, they'll stand out more because you have light against dark. What I'm doing is I'm kind of primarily putting it in the... Uh, the areas where they're a little bit, uh, it's a little bit lighter. Let me get um, some of these kind of darker areas.
Let's go for a couple gold ones as well, just um, for variety. It's like if you're exploring a an unexplored cavern, you came across uh, some diamonds and gold. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay, let's see what this combination of gold and, s gold and clear look like. You see there's gold. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but some of these are gold and some of them are clear. Like that. Or crystals like that. Now, I think kind of not just having them right there might be good to just balance things out a little bit. I don't want to go crazy with this. I've kind of gone crazy in a couple other scenes, and I thought, ah, I should have, you know, it's too much. And we'll just have a little bit less in some areas. I'll generally um, have it in kind of the illuminated areas, though. You know, just in general. Because, you know, that's, chances are, you know, if you, if things are sparkling, that means, you know, there's some light um, kind of reflecting off of it, right? So you want to put them in that light. It's like they're kind of revealing themselves in terms of that sparkly characteristic of them. Toughest things is just getting the uh, getting the gems up. This is a great gem picker right here, but you still have to get the uh, you know, the crystals kind of upright for you know in order to pick them up. All right, so here we go. Like this, see those little crystals. <laughs> I don't know. This really, it's just really fun stuff. To, there you go. You can really see them now like that. You can see where I've applied them like that. See that? How they glisten like that. There's those characters looking over there. You guys are looking in the wrong spot. Um, why don't we put that? Let's put a couple right up here too. Kind of on the wall. And here we'll put a couple. small. I'm just kind of putting my finger in the uh, those little gems and it just comes right out. It just sticks to my finger. Okay. I 
I found my new technique. I just kind of pick it up with my finger if they're upside down like this. And I just get that. And I got my gem picker there. Good. I guess I hate kind of having to flip them over on the piece of paper. All right. How about one gold? ones seem like they're a little bit more pointy, so they're a little bit harder to pick up. All right, let's see. There's some on the, some on the wall like that, kind of glistening back. See that? You can do everything. You do emeralds or something like that. You do them in green. That'd be kind of interesting, huh? Look at that. Isn't that kind of fun? Uh, if you don't have some crystals like that, you can use your, uh, you know, your gold and silver pen, you know, if you have them. Uh, paint pens. Here's a white paint pen right here. I'm not, it's not going to represent, really, um, gems or something like that, but we're going to kind of push um, lighting a little bit more in here. We'll emphasize it a touch more. I kind of like what's going on in here in terms of just the overall lighting, but I won't do too much of this. I'm just kind of putting some little highlights on some of the rocks formations, if they're still light, like on the edge of it, like that, just to sharpen up a couple light areas. So... rocks just a touch because they they're, they're not in a, a you know a super lit area so I'm just putting a little bit of highlights in those areas okay kind of the top surfaces of the top edge of the rock or so just a couple little dots I could stamp, you know, that little rock texture that I stamped in here in black. I could stamp it in, you know, kind of white in here too. Let's give that a try. I did that um, on a recent scene. I thought it looked really good. Okay, so let's take this. And it's kind of the yin yang of a kind of stamp applications, right? You do it in black, then you do it in white. I'm kind of blotting it off a little bit first. Yeah. Let me blot it off real good. There's black on there on the edge. Okay. Blot it off a little bit so I get a little bit of a lighter impression. So. All right, so I say I'm getting a darker impression when you blot it off, you know, so it's not stamping out so light.
All right, let's take a look here and see what that looks like. Okay, see those kind of impressions along the wall. Gives it a little bit more texture, I think. There's people kind of finding that crystal like that, or diamond. Another light over here, light flooding in. And, I don't know, what do you think? A lot of you wouldn't want to go into that cave, but if you can step in there and get that, would you? <laughs> All right. Fun stuff. Thanks for joining me in the uh, the cavern. To do a little gem hunting. Hope you enjoyed your time. Thanks as always for tuning in the channel. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And until the next scene, that glare on there, I have to, that's, I'm kind of holding it so I, I don't have that glare right there. All right, thanks again.